We're so glad you're here this morning to worship the Lord on this first Sunday in May and to have Holy Communion. We're not quite yet ready to have communion in person at the altar and in, as, as we're used to. Hopefully we'll be able to do that very soon. But for this morning, it's the first time that we get to sing again. And so we invite you to sing with masks on and social distancing uh, and uh, use your hymnals this morning as well. The lyrics will also be on the screen. Uh, for our final hymn, we do want you to use the hymnal. We'll be reading together the last two verses of the last hymn. So I just want to let you know that right up front. We have about 50 people worshiping with us this morning. We're glad that you're here. And for all who are worshiping with us uh, through our recorded worship service, God bless you. We hope that you're able to come and worship with us in person whenever you feel comfortable to do so. And a special welcome this morning to all of our guests. It's our privilege to worship with you this morning in God's house. Please stand as you're able for our gathering prayer. You'll find it printed in the bulletin, and it will also be on the screen. We come, God of the journey, a church of families, some of a longer time in the area, some more recent, some connected together by kinship, and some connected by friendship. We come hoping to find companionship for the journey, solidarity for the struggle. We gather, God of hospitality, around your welcome table, a table not yet round, but rounding. We gather seeking to become a round table people, welcoming of all with no preferred seating, no firsts and no lasts, and no corners for the least of these. We yearn, God of creative diversity, for a new way of living and relating as neighbors, not strangers, as brothers and sisters, not them and us. We yearn to live fully, praising you. You are the light of the world as we seek to live in the unity of our call to peace, love, and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is God of Love and God of Powers, and we will sing all verses.
Let's affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. It will be found on the screen as well as in your hymnal on page 881. Let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time in our worship, we share our prayer concerns and our updates and answers to prayer as well. You'll also find the prayer cards in your pew pocket there. You're invited to to write those down. Um, Let us know whether or not it's something that we can uh, share with the entire church family. We send out email blasts on Monday and Thursday. If it's more private, then simply mark that as private. And you can drop that in the offering plate or give it to me after the service. So as we look at our prayer list that's in the bulletin this morning, let's add a few names and share some updates. Under Bethany Friends, the father of Sandy Bird passed. His name is Charles Corbin. So let's be in prayer for Lonnie and Sandy Bird. Also a praise under Cancer Chemo, Angie Williams, the mother of Dobreen, uh, had a recent PET scan, and there is no new cancer. Amen. Under our Bethany family, uh, Judy Vaughn uh, is now at home from York Convalescent, and she is continuing her care at home. Also, please note that Sue Moorcock will have a heart ablation and pacemaker on the 6th. And let's pray for Judy Berner this morning. Uh, She will have a liver biopsy on Wednesday. Are there other updates that we can share this morning? Yes. My sister-in-law has been on the list of Kathy Brown for her blood pressure. They couldn't control it, but she had to wear that wrap around her chest for like three months. But she's doing really good, and they got her um, blood pressure under control with medication. They may do um, something with her heart later on down the road, but she is doing very well, and she thanks everyone for their prayers. You're welcome. This is an update on Kathy Brown, one of our Bethany friends. She's doing well. The blood pressure is under control. Please continue to keep Kathy Brown in your prayers. Are there others? Yes. I have a message that my parents' father passed away yesterday. I see. The Heron family in Fairfield. Yes. And second chair request for our church secretary, Adele Trevino. She's due to have outpatient surgery this week. Thank you. As we have in our bulletin, Mike Heron's mother passed recently, and now his father has passed. So please keep Mike and Aaron and the kids in your prayers and thoughts and deeds. And let's remember Adele, our church office administrator, who will also have a procedure this Wednesday. You have uh, an announcement there in the bulletin of, of our office hours and the changes for that. Thank you. Are there others? Yes. I'd like to thank everybody for their phone calls and cards. I had some minor surgery this week. Doing great. Uh, we also have uh, some guests here today. Um, Matt and Jessica and their family. And they have their children, Benny and Katie, and also uh, Wonderful. Welcome. We're glad to see you. Very glad to have you with us again. Welcome.
And we're glad, Jeff, that you had your surgery and are doing well. Are there others? I have a prayer for you, too. Please. That you get to sing. Yay. Yay, very much so. <laughs> and you sound good this morning. Well, let's join together in our unison prayer. It's found in our bulletin. Let us pray. Empowering God, you help us to understand how much we are loved. You give us chances for confession and see in us our potential for growth and good. You give us gifts and strengths which we can develop and grow. Help us to see ourselves and each other in the way you do. Empower us to be confident in the gifts which you give us, such as your grace and the ability to share love. Empower us to learn about ourselves, each other, and the world. Empower us with your Holy Spirit to cope when we face struggles. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and our stronghold. Let us pray this morning for the health and the well-being of our nation, that all who are uh, fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Let's pray for the isolated and for the housebound that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Let us pray for our homes and our families our schools, and young people. And let us pray a blessing on our local community that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Let us pray for all who are recuperating and especially remember Jenny and Judy, Charlotte, and Isabella, and for those in assisted living. And let us all remember and pray now for those who are undergoing cancer, chemotherapy and radiation treatments. Let us pray for those who are grieving this morning, these whom we have mentioned for Sandy Bird at the passing of her father and Mike Heron at the passing of his father and for others who are on our hearts and minds today.
and we pray for all who have upcoming procedures, especially for Adele and for Sue. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and the healing and the protection of God. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Kids, I need your help with something this morning. I want you to give me some examples of some things, okay? Here's the first example. What are some good and some fun things to pull apart? Yes. Say it again. Okay, working microwaves, sure. Yeah. What else? What's good and fun to pull apart? Cotton candy. Bingo. Yes? Biscuits. Yes. Yep. Say it. Ponies. Puzzles, thank you, puzzles. Yeah, pull apart the puzzles, put them back together. Yep. Legos. Okay. Automobiles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, let us pray, yeah. <laughs> what are some not-so-fun things to pull apart? No, I don't <laughs> What are some not so fun things to pull? The contents of a closet. The of a closet. Something, stuck. Something stuck. Anybody here ever had bubble gum in your hair? I don't have that problem anymore, but I hear it's a bad thing to pull apart. So sometimes, you know, if your friends are fighting with each other, you know, or arguing. You have to sort of pull them apart, don't you? And sometimes that's not a very fun thing to do. You know, families today get pulled and twisted and and pulled apart in a lot of different kind of ways. And sometimes they're good ways and fun ways, and sometimes they're not so fun, and it can be painful. The good news is that God loves us. He loves us whether our families are pulled together tight or if our families are feeling pulled apart. So think about the things that are fun to pull apart and maybe the things that are not so fun and know that God loves you. God loves us all. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for our families. Thank you for our homes. Give us grace to live in peace. Amen. Just found out who my automobile mechanics are in the congregation. That's good. If you gave an offering this morning, thank you. Uh, We're not yet passing plates. They're out there in the entryway as you did. Thank you for doing so. Let's go ahead and consecrate those now to the Lord by joining together in our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we want to thank you for the fact that before we can praise and before we can pray, You know our need and are moving to answer. Bless as we tithe and as we give this morning, and we pray that you would meet every need that is represented in this congregation and to all who worship with us online. You know each need, and we commit them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as you're able for our hymn of preparation. We will hum this one. I will ask Rudy to play it through, and then we'll hum both verses. It's found on page 636.
Our scripture this morning comes from Revelation chapter 19. Let's read it together. And from the throne came a voice crying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling, and he walks with me. And he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Well, yesterday we had the marriage ceremony of Brandon and Ashley Sweeney. It was a wonderful time. The bride was beautiful and blushing, and if you ask Brandon, he was just as handsome too. Brandon's mom is Denise Byrne, and she and her family live in Suffolk. Um, Dawn Sawyer is the grandmother. Both of them are members here at Bethany. 
Brandon grew up um, here in Bethany and fondly remembers his days in Sunday school, his, his teachers there and worship and the church picnics and vacation Bible school. And you may know that before COVID, Brandon and Ashley traveled from their separate homes in Norfolk to worship at our 830 service. What a tremendous witness that is. Um, Ashley is fond of Bethany, and she is a person of deep faith, too. And they're going to reside in Norfolk and plan to continue coming to Bethany as regularly as their jobs allow them to. I know that you will continue to encourage them um, and involve them as they begin their life together. But today I want to talk about another kind of marriage celebration. And, you know, our liturgy that we'll have in a few minutes for, uh, for Holy Communion says it. It says, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And the imagery of the heavenly banquet and the marriage supper of the Lamb are joined together. I've written down four things about this. Let's take a brief look at them. The first one is this. And that is that the celebration and the joy point to the coming of God's reign. This is both the now and the not yet. It's already begun. And one day, by God's grace, you and I will join that as well. We need to think and remember that even though as we go through the different trials and challenges of this life, that when we go to heaven, we step into a celebration. The Bible gives us many different pictures of what heaven is like, but certainly one of those consistent pictures is that of a celebration, a time of real joy. Here's the second thing. The bride is the church in this. And the scriptures say that we are made ready through repentance and faith and deeds, deeds which are the fruit of that faith. And the scripture went on to say that it was granted to her, the church, to be clothed with fine linens, bright and pure. And that's symbolism for holiness and for spiritual growth and for the maturity. And it's a reminder to us that even though we, we play into that and we help with that and we contribute to that, ultimately holiness is a gift from God. It's God's work in our lives and in the life of the church as well. Here's the third thing. The marriage supper is the fellowship. So if Jesus is portrayed symbolically as the groom and the church as the bride, then who are the invited guests? Well, one way to interpret this is that it's sort of a double symbolism. The bride and the guest are the same. And, you know, this is not unusual in the New Testament. John does this early in his writings where he says that Jesus is both the lamb and the good shepherd. So there's an image that's sort of conjoined there together. Other writers do that too. In Matthew, for example, Jesus is the light of the world. And a few verses later, he says, you are the light of the world. Okay. So that's certainly one way to look at it. But I think that there's more of a distinction between the bride and the invited guest. The bride is the church in heaven, those who have gone before us, the martyrs, the innocents, the Old Testament characters who lived before the birth of Christ, like when Jesus had his scene of transfiguration on the mountain. And if we follow that line, then we are the invited guests. We're all invited guests on this side of heaven. And like those who went before us, we too are made ready through repentance and through faith, through love, and through the deeds, which are the gifts and the fruit of faith. Jesus is looking for fruit. He's looking for the fruit of our efforts. And the good news here is that the marriage supper is wide and long enough to include the groom, the bride, and the invited guests. There will be souls who had the privilege to hear the gospel and to receive the gospel in their tongue, in their lifetime. There will be souls who did not have that privilege or that opportunity to do so. 
They'll be the last minute ones. They'll be those from other faiths who, who God looks at and says, these are my people too. That one belongs to me. These are my invited guests. I see my son in these. Remember, heaven belongs to Jesus. He's the one who says comes in. And we're given a real clear picture of what that looks like. Here's the fourth thing. The symbol of the marriage supper of the Lamb reminds us that God and the heavenly hosts are actively working out God's purposes right now. Right now in contemporary history. You know, over the past four years that we've had together, some of the parts of our time together have sort of been unique to us. You know, we've had the town meetings to talk about different issues and, and, and ministries. We've, talked to, we've had the Who We Are meetings. Remember them? Who We Are as we talked about the general conference issues that are before us. And certainly with this pandemic, with the Healthy Church team as well. We've revised and expanded our, our uh, congregational phone trees so that now it includes more than 200 people in 21 groups. And yet there are other parts, the not yet, that is still in process. Some of the issues that are in process, whether or not you will choose to embrace and fully embrace an audio and video upgrade in our sanctuary and throughout our church. If you'll embrace a vision for Bethany in a post-COVID world, what will it look like? Who will we be? Who will you be? You know and I know, we've heard it from others and we know in our own hearts, it's not going to be exactly the same way as it was. It can't be. We're too concerned about the health of our community and for one another. So Reverend Paul Song will be your next pastor and he will stand in this pulpit July 1st. Your staff, Pastor Parish Relations Committee, is, will meet this week to plan our transition over the next two months. We'll share that plan with you, and we'll keep you up to date on all the different events that are part of that. And I know that you're going to continue to write your own story of faithfulness and your own story and witness to Christ. Before we go to the table here, I want to offer a question for you to meditate on. The metaphor of the church as the bride of Christ really gives us a powerful expression to the idea of a close personal union with Christ, doesn't it? So ask yourself, in what way does your relationship with Christ resemble a marriage? And how does your own relationship with the church resemble a marriage? Let's think about these things as we come to the table. If you would like to follow along the liturgy in our hymnal, it's found on page 13. It's also going to be on the screen. We're going to start with the Great Thanksgiving there on page 13 and ask for you to respond in the bold face type as you are willing and comfortable to do so. Let's begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. With your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
It's by the baptism of his suffering, his death, and his resurrection that you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, that we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and as a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, as our directions are in our bulletin, we invite you to go to your homes and to have the bread and the cup there as part of your meal or before or after your meal. Our closing hymn is found on page 623. Again, we're going to sing the first three verses. Please stand as you're able, and then we will read verses 4 and 5 together.
who soon we rise. The symbols disappear. The feast, though not the love, is past and gone. The bread and wine remove, but thou art here. Nearer than ever, still my shield and sun. Feast after feast thus comes and passes by. Yet, passing, points to the glad feast above, giving sweet foretaste of the festal joy, the Lamb's great bridal feast of bliss and love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us and go with us until we are together again. Amen. Our ushers this morning are John Kent and Milton Hudgens, and they'll escort you out pew by pew.